Good morning, everybody. Live from the Predator Arena here at the Rio Mall Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Welcome back. It's the CSI Invitational Eight Ball Championships. As you know, Q-Sports International has invited 16 of the greatest players in the world to come here and compete over three and a half days in a round-robin format. We have a 10-ball division. We're now in day two of our eight-ball invitation. <coughs> we have groups of four players from Tim. the Philippines, from Tim. Europe, from Asia, and from North America. And they will be playing group play, at the end of which the player with the best record will proceed to a four-person uh, single elimination final and uh, that will begin tomorrow at 3 p.m. Before I introduce our two competitors, I would like to take an opportunity to uh, recognize and express our appreciation for all of our sponsors, starting, of course, with C CSI, the Rio Hotel here, Predator, the official queue of the CSI Invitational, Cyclop Billiard Balls, Diamond Billiard Products, Simona's Cross, Billiards Digest, the Magic Ball Rack, Tweet and Fiber Company, and Master Chalk, and last, but by certainly no means least, each and every one of you great supporters out there that have been with us all week, and to all of you right here watching live, thank you all for your kind, kind support. Okay, this is the other Group C uh, matchup, uh, excuse me, Group B matchup to begin play today. Our first player from Taiwan. This gentleman is a former silver medalist in the 2013 World Games. He has a top three finish in the World Pool Masters, and he is the 2012 World 8-Ball Champion. Sponsored by Cyclops Pool Balls and representing Taiwan Typhoon, please warmly welcome Zhang Lin Chang. Thank you so much. His opponent from Jacksonville, Florida. This gentleman owns victories in the China, Japan, and Philippine Opens. He's a former World Cup of Pool Champion and he holds three World Straight Pool titles among his long list of accomplishments. He's sponsored by Cupod, Simonis, Lacasse, and Kamui. Please welcome the hitman, it's Torsten Homan. Okay, gentlemen, go ahead and move back to the break. Again, race to nine, alternate break. The referee in charge of both matches is Steve Tobias. Are we on? Yup. Good morning. Good morning, Ken. Oh, he's over there talking. Well, we have another long day of some world class, world champion pool players and sweat. It's going to be a good match here. I'll tell you, I, it's a pick them. Thorsten and Chung. I just don't know. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I just don't know in these matches. It's so close. What's amazing about these matches is, is um, you know, in a big tournament when you get 128 players, there's always a few guys in there that you might get to slip by an easier match. There's no easy matches in this thing. Every match you're playing, somebody that's gonna, I mean, what pressure? Every, everybody you play in this in this format plays perfect. And probably none are ever going to miss maybe but one ball. I like that pressure. So it's hard. To, it's hard to bet against Thorsten here, but this Chung is a monster. So I don't know. I just don't know. Who you like here, Ken? Oh, we're going to start already with that. Huh? I'm, I'm, who do, yeah, who do I'm, I like I'm, already? I'm not going to wait for the first three games. I have a. I like Torsten. Uh, yeah, that's just all. How can you? How can you even have a? You know, just to have a pick. Hard to have. Uh, a well, pick. I, it's basically. I'm. I'm guessing. Uh, it, I. Pretty much a coin flip, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I think, just don't think you can. You know. I think the breaks. The breaks are about even. I mean, Torsten has a powerful, powerful break. The only reason that I'm going to give Toasty a slight edge is his superior straight pool knowledge and ability to open up clusters and bump balls into you know, places that they can go. And if that comes and up, he has the edge. I, I, would, I would think so. He, I think he also has a maybe a touch of an edge if it ever got into a safety battle. 
again, uh, based more on his straight pool ability. But, uh, you know, that might make it like, you know, 51-49 or 52-48. It's real, real close. This guy here plays so good, too, boy. I mean. I well, know Thorsten, so that's who I'm pulling for because he's kind of a you know, he's well, a buddy, he's a buddy, buddy of mine. Of he's mine. a buddy of mine too. Yeah. You know, they're all they're, you know pretty much they're all buddies of mine. The uh, the Taiwanese I've met oh maybe five or six times over the years, but um, you know because of the language barrier and I work through the interpreter most of the time, we know each other, but I never had much in the way of uh, Smiling, right? conversations with them. But I've spent a lot of time with Torsten over the years, and you know we've had a couple meals together and stuff like that. Yeah, we've even done some commentary together too. Oh, really? Yeah, and he is an extremely articulate individual, and what it's a lot of fun. What are you trying to say? I'm just <laughs> trying to say Torsten's an extremely <laughs> articulate yeah, individual. Yeah, I uh, there's got not, there is nothing, no in the innuendos there. <laughs> what are you? Yeah. You must be paranoid, Jesus. <laughs> well. I should. I mean, be you up. come. You come with paradigm yesterday. Remember? And I learned a word. Cerebral. Cerebral. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to use it today. Okay. Just make sure you know when to use it. I will. Okay. If I if I start to say it in the wrong spot, nudge me. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, Chong Young Lin, which is really the right way for me to pronounce it, and I've been kind of messing it up all week. I just got another Taiwanese lesson from from the interpreter, but uh, yeah, I really should be saying Chong Yang Lin is the uh, correct way to say it, but uh, I'm going to do my best. Nevertheless, um, <coughs> he uh, he won his match yesterday, so he's one and zero, and Torsten won his match yesterday, and he's one and zero. So whoever wins this match is going to have a stranglehold on the group at two and zero. Oh. Because on the match on table two between Torst between Corey and Efren, they each lost yesterday. They're both 0 and 1, so one of them will be 1 and 1 with a s probably a slim chance. And whoever loses that match is uh, most assuredly not going to be able to get out oh, of the group. Uh, whoever uh, whoever loses that match over there is probably going to be done. They probably have no chance to win the group, right? Right. Because right. they'll only have they'll only be able to have a one and two record, and someone else will already have two wins. Whoever wins this match here will have yeah. two wins. Okay. So um, basically, the Corey Efron match is for survival. Look at this shot. Look at this shot. Man, oh man, oh man, that ball was hit so perfect. You see how it went by that ball? Mm -hmm. Boy, look at this shot. What a shot he made. It's like perfect, perfect speed, perfect angle. It's a possibility I might take chain here. Well, you can't have my guy and and me have him too. <laughs> <coughs> So you, <coughs> excuse me, see, you asked me first who I liked, so normally you just blurt out, I like this guy, and I'm stuck with the rest. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you one right now to think about, because it's not going to happen until, uh, I think, 5 o'clock. Let me uh, take a look here. Yeah, <coughs> okay, at 5 o'clock... It's going to be Group A playing their last match of the round robin because Group A played twice yesterday, mm -hmm. and it's going to be um, the younger co-brother against Mike DeShane. Each of them are 2-0. and oh. So they the winner wins the group. The winner of uh, that match wins the group. So you can ponder on that for four or five who, hours. I well, I, I know you want. You want, you want Mr. Co. And I'll go ahead and be patriotic, and I'll take Michael. I'd like to see Mike win. Traitor. I don't know. I'd like. I would. I'm <laughs> I'd like to see Mike win too because we've win. seen, we've seen plenty of uh, Taiwan Typhoon players uh, getting uh, getting through the groups, and of course we had an all an all co family final there in the uh, in the ten ball invitational. So let's watch Torsten break here in rack number two. Corey already won zero up on Efren and Corey at the table. We're going to be switching back and forth as much as we can today because uh, oh, 
this oh, looks this looks, looks very, very attractive. Hello, stripes. Yep. Is the eleven? Four, does four, the eleven go? <clears throat> yeah, I think it does. He and I think side. you're going to take. Well, it's all about the nine ball, really. If he. I thought the nine was sitting further out. Yeah, he's going to have to do something with the nine. That's, that's well, he, he can. He, there's plenty of room to get and uh, slice it down yeah. the corner there where the stripe is. But that's the it. only reason he I think he he's going to take. move it here. Yeah, but you know, if you take the solids, the eight goes in the corner by the right. It goes in the side. The seven's in front of the side. And once the one's cleared, those other two solids, three and, and the five, go clearly. And I think it's 100% the nine ball that's causing him to take the solids. And I mean, look at this, you just pull this out, shoot the one, come to the center, shoot the seven, and then the three, five, the eight has two pockets. You'd probably leave the six for the last ball. Shoot no, I think he's got to shoot the six right now. You think he's gonna shoot the one? I think he's gonna shoot the six right now. That's what I said, I think he's gonna shoot the six. That's what I thought you said. forgot to tell the uh, incoming referee that they're playing Sweet rack there. your own. The last time uh, he worked the 10 ball, of course, he was doing the racking, so I had to run over there and get that squared away. But uh, just as we thought, uh, the one and the seven and uh, then these two. And he also, I see, uh, opened up the eight ball just to make it no problem whatsoever. So two break and runs here from the, from the gate. And that's what we kind of expected. Yeah, if the balls get a little funny, Torsen's got the edge, that's for 100% sure. Mm -hmm. Moving the balls around. Nudge one here, nudge one there. I talked to Billy yesterday on the phone. His flight got delayed three times. Oh, my God. Yeah, he was still at the airport. Corey has a 2-0 lead over Efren, as you can see over there. Efren just broke the balls, obviously. Didn't put anything down. Corey with a chance to open up a 3-0 lead. And like I said, regrettably, whoever loses that match can't win the group. And Chong Yong Lin about to break off here in game three. I'll tell you, yesterday, the match of the day to me was the Ralph Shane match which went to the hill. Ralph with a break and tough run out in the case game. 
but they opened up that rack, that match, each scratching on their first break. The other guy ran out for 1-1, one, one, and then it was essentially, you know, 2-1, two, 2-2, one, 3-2, two, 3-2, two, three, two, three, three, et cetera, until it got to 5-5. Five, five. Ralph broke in rack 11, ran out, and then Shane broke dry at 5-6 down. Ralph ran out, broke and ran, got to 8. Uh, Eight five, I think it might. No, it, I, I apologize. It did go six six, and then Shane broke dry and Ralph ran out and Shane caught him at eight, but Ralph had the break in the case game and made a, a tricky little out there to take down the best played match of the event. Um, there was, I don't think, a half of an error by either guy other than those first two scratches and. Shane's one dry break. And you're going to see Shane next, I believe, right here on the TV table. And he's going to have his hands full because he's going to have a Dennis the Robocop. And Shane having a record of 0-1 and, and Dennis having 1-0 and zero going in. Once again, that uh, if Shane can't win that match, uh, his chances are going to pretty much go out the out the window for any hope of getting through the group. Corey did win the rack over there. He's up three nothing on the magician. And Chong Young starting his way right through this third rack with apparently no great difficulty so far. Little bit of congestion up here um, behind the foot spot. He'd like love to get to the 13. That's what he's looking at. He's not quite dead straight on the uh, 15 ball. So it looks like he might be able to cheat the pocket a little bit and hold the line for the cue ball or he can do that play the nine next. But uh, from the 9 to the 13, there's lots of traffic. So we'll have to see which route he picks. Okay, well, he, he can't draw it, I don't think, because the 8. And he's going to maybe have to try to float all the way down and even if he's got an angle on the 13, that's okay because he can use the seven to stop the cue ball right there for the 11. This isn't the preferred path, but it's the only path that he seems to be able to play. Just past the two ball here. Uh-oh. And that is not well done at all. Too far was better than too short there, Cotton. If he even, wow, even he if he got to the, even if he got, he should have tried to hit the end, end rail, rail and bounce out. Point. And if you don't bounce out, you're still okay. Yeah, the 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 Because the, the seven seven's going to stop everything. the cue ball. Like right, right, there. right. So he, he just, uh, just wasn't thinking. Got to go. Listen, got to go to the end rail. It hits the seven ball right in the back of the right. head. You've got to know on all your shots, but especially critical position shots, you've got to know what side to air on. You know what? This shot, I, I can't afford to go too far, or this one, I can't afford to come up short. You know, you've got to yeah, you've got to put that there. in your mind before you before you pull the trigger. And uh, I mean, the equipment's fresh. The table was cleaned this morning. There was only uh, 15, 20 minutes of practice on it. The balls are are, are nice and slick. So, you know, maybe he expected the, the cue ball to keep rolling. My guess, Cotton, is he just didn't hit the cue ball high enough. Yeah. I think his, his speed, his stroke speed was good, but I just don't think he came uh, high enough above the equator of the cue ball. If he's going to kick the 13, he's got to kick two rails. I, and and, the, I and the seven still stops. Yeah, him. but that's that's a sellout. Unless he makes it, and that's, shot, that's the worst thing he could have done there. He shot right into the two. And it doesn't matter if the seven doesn't go through the gap, it goes in the other pocket. So I think you'll see Torsten take care of these three, four balls right here, just because mm -hmm. they're all so close together. 
and then uh, probably uh, I'm going to guess uh, 165 for the last three or 156. I just don't think the five will be the, the last ball before the eight. And just pull it back a couple inches and shoot the four in the side and be on the two, mm -hmm. or you can pull it all the way back for the four in the same pocket, which I think I like better. You come up a little short. A little short, yep. Yeah. And now he's got to make sure when he comes across for the deuce, he maintains this type of an angle on the two, so he's not going anywhere near the two stripes with the cue ball. Well, he's okay now because he can follow forward, go straight up the table for the, for the one or the five. The fact that he's moved the eight ball as well, too, now gives him a lot more options on which ball to leave for last. It almost seems to me now would be a kind of one stop, six, then the five, but you can do this four different ways. Why didn't he draw the ball back about three more feet? I don't know. I don't think it even mattered. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think this is the type of shot he needed to be right on top of. I just like getting close. Yeah, well, close is usually better. But when you shoot like this guy, you can you can take an extra couple of feet on the shot without oh, yeah. being nervous at all about it. What's his high run straight ball? Something ridiculous. 404. <laughs> that is just ridiculous. You know how many balls that is? Can you imagine? Yeah, it's over 28 racks. Can you imagine yeah. getting 28 break shots? I mean, can you yeah. imagine? No, that is, I can't that imagine. Is just a, I mean, and he did that. Um, it was it was around 2000 or 2001 when he did that. Of course, we know uh, John Schmidt has two runs over 400. Uh, one exactly at 400, and one at 403. And he's the only player that that I'm aware of, and I think anybody I've ever talked to that can claim two runs over 400. That's a lot of balls. I was telling you, that's a lot of balls. I mean, just to think of how many break shots it is without getting jammed up. Right. I mean, how well, many, um, yeah, you know, and how many ridiculous. times do you, during those racks are you running into the the, the stack of the second time in the in, yeah. the, in the rack to yeah. open I them mean, up? That's just so many, so and many. Balls. Never having your cue ball on the rail for a break shot that makes it tough. I, I mean, know. I mean, that's just you know the, the stars have to yeah. be aligned. For Torsten, Corey, 4-0 over Efren. Efren at the table. And, of course, Torsten just won on Chong Lung's break. So he has a chance now to make it a two-game swing from that position error on the two ball that turns into ball in hand. Nine in the corner. A <laughs> little bump on the cue ball here. Uh, I, I think I like the stripes because of the three ball. No, I want, <coughs> I want the stripes. Yeah. You got, you yeah, got, I said I like the stripes because, the solid. because oh, I got the solid. Now we're doing, now we're doing groups. Well, yeah. Oh. Well, if you want to pick yeah, all hangers. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to get beat up here in the booth because I'm not going to miss, and you're not going to miss. Oh. If he can make the 10 in the side, I like starting with that, even though it's it's a decent key ball to get on the 8, but so is the, so is the yeah. 15. Yeah. But the 8's, uh, you know, just, it's a little bit tucked away there. Once the 10's out of the way, 
there's uh, you know the five balls the area you'd want to be. You might even go to the yeah, go down there and take care of these two. I like Twelve it. in the side, fifteen like and the slide over. I like the combination. Oh sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's oh, perfect. Yeah. Just leave it on the rail here, and then you can come I'm right sure. around for the 12. Right. I'm going forward here. Aren't you? Oh, yeah. I think he's deciding whether he's got to do almost a bit of a rail first to, to come one. straight Mike. at the 12, because two rails, your, your angle to the 12 can come too far. There's really nothing wrong with this either, and then use the, you'll use the 12 to get to the eight. Right, that works too. Yeah. And I just think you, I think the angle on the uh, on the strike by the corner was just awkward enough that he didn't want to play it. I think this is three rails, not two. What do you? Nah, yeah. maybe, maybe it's two. Well, maybe it it's just hit, two to the middle. The, yeah. There you yeah. go. Just like that. Just got to hold the angle. Now, can he just float forward and bounce off and not even go, come near the five? I think that's I think a thing so. to do. Like just away from the rail. between the diamond and the side pocket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he'll have to try to get out here too far. I can't really tell the angle, but I think mm -hmm. it goes just if he gets right by the side. Well. Yeah, see right there between yeah. the diamond and the side pocket. I think that's the best place to get to. Trying to come all the way down here. Uh, he'd have to kind of force his angle. No problem now. So three to one. Corey's racking on table number two. Did Duffin get out that last I game? I believe he did. I can't see the scoreboard, but no, uh, he, didn't. he didn't. Five, he's nothing. five nothing. He didn't get out. Oh my God. Well, he just uh, just been a bad week for the magician. I'll tell you, he's uh, he's certainly off his his game. But we're so we're so spoiled by him. I mean, he gets he gets to get cut slack for the rest of his life. He's built up so much credit with everything he's done. Like I said that just it's just it kind of hurts my heart to to see the greatest struggle like that because I know it's got to be bothering him too. And oh yeah. I know as pool fans, we, we all want to see him just continue to play magic like like he has for so long. Chong Yung Lin to break here. Fifth rack. Pretty appetizing. Three, six, and three balls on the break. I like, I, I like the stripes if the Four ten goes. The break. If, if the ten goes, because the fourteen that's right behind the spot can get you to the twelve, which looks like it the slides by in the, the nine. The ten doesn't go by the three. Okay. I don't know it does if, it. if it doesn't, then you've got to shoot the, the solids. Four, you gotta take the shoot the four. Well I think you gotta shoot the solids anyway, or you're gonna have to play the eight up here. I like shooting the four and just trying to roll down a few inches and shoot the six the seven next. Can't tell the angle. He can actually get the seven in between the gap between the, the, stripe, mean, yeah. the stripe the uh, stripe near the spot and the nine ball. If that and happens, if he, he can bump the bump nine. the nine to stay. Right, right. He might have too much of an angle here to get to stay in that gap. You know yeah, because I mean? if he draw if he draws it, he's drawing it at the thirteen ball. 
which is just past the side. I don't know if he can draw it sharp enough into that rail. So it looks like he's, he's coming forward here, maybe hit the cushion and bounce out. No, he just lagged it for the gap and he steered the cue ball. Took his eyes off the shot a little bit, which tends to happen when you're. Is he, he, the table, is the table still open? Yeah. Well, then he's shooting seven here. Well, of course. <laughs> he's going to have to wind up shooting the four in the corner here, but now it plays a lot easier, especially with the three ball where oh, it is. Yeah. The three, four should be the last two. Oh, yeah. And actually, this should give him a nice angle on the one to yeah. go with the eight ball with the cue ball. Well, this was a gift to Thorsten here, that's for sure. Well, so was the gift uh, two racks ago where uh, Yong Lin uh, saved himself yeah. on the deuce and gave up a ball in hand. Just want to go at the eight, but maybe not quite there. So now you're going to play the three. Not touching the 10. Bounce out four inches or five. Is he going over and back, or he's just going to float to the center of the table? What do you think? I think he's going to go over and back. I think so too. He is, he's not ball. afraid. He's not afraid to hit a ball firm, and uh, I don't think you want to try to lag this. Because he really you, hit that ball kind of bad. Well, he had an air on the side of coming too far. He couldn't afford to just, you know, partially hook himself on the eight ball on the three. So he, you know, he he did shade to the the correct side. Yeah. I guess he wasn't quite as thin as it looked, Bobby. Yeah, There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Meanwhile, it's just getting worse over there for the poor magician. He's now 6-0 down in a race to nine in an alternate break format. And the handwriting's kind of on the wall over there. And here, the number one ranked player in the world, Mr. Torsten Holman, has a four to one lead on Chong Yong Lin. But things are gonna kind of take shape pretty well today before we go off the air tonight. Um, we're going to know for sure at least two of the group's um, winner. The last two matches to, um, uh, the last two matches tomorrow in round robin play at 11 and 1 are B groups, I think uh, C and D. Let me check. And all the the groups and the challenge matches and everything here. Uh, I've been a little confused. Yeah, <clears throat> Group C and D finish uh, the round robin tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. So we will have our Group A and B winners established before uh, we go to bed tonight. But as I did say, uh, the five o'clock match between Mike DeShane and um, Ping Chung Ko will determine the group winner because they're both 2-0. and oh. Whoever wins that goes well, on. Yeah, huh? yeah, absolutely. That'll be a big match. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, group B, B we're watching now, and they are playing again at 7 o'clock tonight. So that should determine the winner too. Make the white ball? Yep. yep. Drew it right back in the corner. Oh boy. Well, he had an opportunity to stretch his lead out. He just, you know, 
Chong Yong has uh, already made two unforced errors. He just wouldn't expect him to make another one here with an open table and ball in hand. I think the solids is the group to go for, and the one ball is the ball to start with, unless the eight, yeah, unless the eight doesn't pass. But uh, all the solids have pockets. I think I'd leave the seven ball for last. The three ball is the ball that he needs to get on next, I think, Bobby. And then maybe, see, the reason I like going to three next is you can come out in the middle and you'll have the two, the four, or the, even for an emergency, the seven. He does have to get the five out of the way, but I do like the three ball here right now. You can see by that camera angle that the five clearly goes into the side or this corner. He might even consider going to the five next. I don't think there's any advantage to shooting the four right now. I definitely think the three is the shot. I guess he didn't like the angle on the three. I mean, the two's okay to get on the eight as well, but I just don't think he liked his angle on the three ball. And now he's created a better one to get to the five. That little applause you heard in the background is because Efren did get out finally in rack number seven. Unfortunately, he trails six to one and it's Corey's break. That's just a touch short. Oh, I didn't see this ball. I didn't either. I didn't see that that was a solid. I thought it was maybe the 15 or the 14, even though they're right out there in plain view, but I just never saw that ball, Bobby. So now, is he too thin to go just to the other side of those two stripes and play the five in the lower right corner? I, I, think, think, he he can, I think he can get there. I think yeah. so? Yeah. Might need to hit the second rail to slow the cue ball down. And he couldn't slow it down enough. Where's this going? Well, he's got the four. Uh, you better take care of that five ball quickly. <clears throat> I actually think the four is better to get on the five than the two is. You may have to load this thing up with inside and come as far across as you can. Saving the five for last not only makes the position on it tough, but makes getting to the eight tough. I don't think you can risk trying to come two rails out of the corner. The only other possibility here, Bobby, is play the two, draw it all the way back here to the short cushion and bounce off slightly to play the five in the side. I don't like that. I don't like it either, <laughs> but um, I, don't, I don't really like any of the options here. I think that's what he's doing. I think he's bringing, drawing this cue ball all the way to the, well. I would look, you know, he's, this is pretty, shoot the deuce, play the four. If you have an angle on the five, you're gonna miss those balls. Oh, I'm not worried about him hitting those two stripes near the five. It's the traffic down there in the kitchen that <coughs> get on the eight. Look what he just did. <coughs> Excuse me. And he tried to bank it. The bank was straight on. Just, just goes to show you there's no bank that you can't, that you can miss. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, ball can be straight dead on. You can miss it yep. playing on the bank. Yeah, you got to you got to hit the cue ball so pure on a bank shot.
Corey seven, Efren one, Efren racking. He's gonna line up here for the Z shot over and back on the 13. The only caution you need here is not to overhit it and flirt with the upper left corner pocket. I think he'll just hit just past the side here and wind up more near the two ball than the end rail. Oh, he had much more room than it looked like, so. So Chang Yong Lin could not take advantage. Why are you calling him that when his name is? Actually, because I was told I was pronouncing it wrong. Well, yeah, but it's how, it's how it's written. It's written. Yeah, but. Jong Lin Chang. That's how it's but, written. But Chong is his first name. Then why don't they have it first? Ask the person that made the cards. <laughs> I don't have all the answers, uh, Mr. Cotton. Yes, you do. That's why you get well, paid the big bucks. Well, I tell you, you what, if I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. Okay, what are you going to say? <laughs> I'm going to say the card's backwards. <laughs> the, the card operator era. Yeah, I mean, they have it written down like that. And well, I mean, it's, it's, it's all of them. Uh, we, like I said, they get Americanized when the name cards were made, and I... I, I certainly don't blame the interpreter for yeah. wanting me to do it correctly. I assure you there's a, a large audience in Taiwan watching this. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's not right to, to mispronounce oh, a no, champion's no, no. name. And, you know, we, we struggled enough with it. Uh, so I, I rewrote it down even phonetically in front of me. And I'm, I'm practicing as I right say it. Right now the score is 5-1, to one, Holman Thorsten. Uh, very good. Oh, Holman. Where's he from originally? Germany? Fulda, Germany. Yes. He lives in Florida now, huh? Yeah. Been living there for almost 10 years now. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, he, he bought the house there right after oh, he won right. the IPT, and that was uh, sum that was summer of 06. Well, how nice was I that? Think, I think he p had spent some time in the New York area um, before he took up permanent residence there in uh, in Jacksonville. I was in Florida for a while. My parents moved there when they retired. Of course, they, they were from Massachusetts, but they retired and did what just about everybody else in our neck of the woods did. You get out of the cold and move down there too sticky. Yeah. They were uh, West Palm Beach area, which is, you know, Tropic Central. Well, I know he's got to take the solids here. He's just trying to figure out about this three and seven, three and six down here. Well, it looks like the three goes, and then it looks like it's easy to bump the other yeah. ball out, but you want to leave an insurance ball, or you've got, or you got to bump it down into space where it'll go. Yeah. And uh, you got to get the four out of there if you want to have the side pocket as well as the corner pocket. But I think, uh, I think maybe he, he might just leave him for the end. That'll be He's well, it will be tricky, but, I mean, he's a good enough player to get good on the three. And oh, like yes. I said, once he gets the four out of the way, even if he got the wrong angle on the three and just bounced to the short rail, he could shoot the six upstream where the four is going. And he might be coming back for him now while he's got a few balls down there to get him out of jail if he needs to. He can just about shoot and stop here. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Yeah. Because the one ball is, is kind of the insurance ball. The only thing we can't tell is does the seven go under the nine, and it won't matter if he can get straight in on the two. Yeah. Who won that Efren game? with another rack closes to seven two. You can almost tell by the sound of the applause who wins the rack over there. He's still so damn popular as he should be. The stun ball. Nice shot. Oh, that's that's 
That's a real professional touch to do that from that distance. Here's a problem. I, the corner is the easier pocket, but he's going to graze the 13 if he plays it in the corner. And does that send the cue ball right at the 8 where he's got to worry about getting by the 8 or bouncing off of it, you know, needing a little more speed on this shot? I, I don't see playing this ball in the side. First of all, the pocket's much smaller. And then the cue ball's headed to the stripes. If he shoots this ball, it's going to graze the 13 and go right where his tip is at. Well, that's what I'm saying. Eight. Can, can he eight. graze the 13 yeah. thin enough where he oh, won't yeah. be going at the 8 ball? Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he'll okay, because that's what he needs right to do. Them. He needs yeah. to get just past the 8 ball. Yeah, he'll stop right, right there. Yeah, well, that's, th that's the plan. Yeah. A lot of it depends, too. I mean, you've to get the cue ball to glance off the, the 13 and go that far, you've got to hit a little speed on the shot. Perfect. And you see, not that, not that that was, you know, rocket science there, but those are the kind of things he's so used to due to his straight pool background. Oh yeah, he he's knows very what the balls he, are he's going. he knows what's going to happen when you need to do something like that. Not that his opponent probably couldn't have seen that as well, but I'm just saying that Torsten I think has a much bigger comfort level with those type of shots because he's faced them so many times. Uh, now he's going to have to shoot the one, and he if can't. the six seven doesn't pass the nine, he's got a problem. He should play it off that ball. Yep, he might. That's what he's going to do. And just he shoot. might have to. And he draws straight back into that gap. Yeah. That's Thing a hanger. Is, this is easy. Yeah, as long as it's off the cushion enough where he'll get a nice yeah. value. He has to you hit it see. about half a ball. And if he draws the cue ball, that's going to put some forward roll on the one, which yeah, means it might glance a little less, which means he's got to hit it fuller. The other thing here is to draw right into the seven and just clip it. And I like that better. Clip half the seven ball here like that. He needed a little more speed. This is not going to be easy. Nah, you he can't. You can't shoot this because you can't. You can hardly foul. get your Q-tip out of the way. Yeah, right. you can't bring. You can't get it. Right. <coughs> yeah. First. Uh, first blunder there. I guess he is shooting it, but. Uh, if he uses a lot of low right, he can get the tip out of the way. Yeah, but it makes the ball play so much harder. He might not have a choice. If he hits it like this, I think. Oh, that's a hell of a shot there. Not What's going to happen To make here? that ball and not foul, I'll tell you. Yeah, especially opposite-handed and stretching. <laughs> hell of a shot there. Not to, make, not to foul there. There might have been a little bit more room than we thought, but either way, it was beautifully executed, but now he's got to close the deal. Because none of it will matter if he doesn't make this ball. And this is for 6-1 and a stranglehold on the match. Corey Duell just got to the hill. Efren's racking down 2-8. Shot, Toasty. Shot in the seven, too. Lefty. Yes, that was a nice shot in the seven there by Lefty Homan. Or home, home and lefty. lefty. Home and lefty. All right. Six, Hell, six to a, one with an opportunity. Made a heck of a shot on the, on the eight. The eight was not easy <laughs> either, absolutely. Yeah, that's a heck of a shot. Okay, so anyway, up next here, we told you is uh, it's a pretty, pretty important match for both players in a Two of the biggest names in the game, Dennis and Shane. Effort just scratched on the break. Oh boy. 
Oh boy. Yeah, he just. He's unscrewing his cue, it looks like. Uh, probably, it's probably his brake cue or he's changing shafts on his playing cue. Something. He probably, he may think he's, he's not gonna break again. Stripes, for sure. Every stripe has a pocket. I think I might shoot the 1410 here and slide to the rail, depending on the angle. I was also looking at the 11 because if he's right on the 11 right now, yeah, <coughs> go, ahead, straight, and, go yeah. ahead and take it out of there and you can save the 12 for your key ball if, if the eight passes the five. But if I'm playing the combination here, I think I'm going to play it off of that uh, ball to the right of the four, not the 13 ball. I think it's the 15. There's a good look at the 11. You can see he clearly can make it. And I still do think this is the right shot because you may have a tough time getting back here. Okay, unfortunately, the it's a mercy killing over there, and Corey has dispatched with Efren nine to two. And regrettably, Efren now has no chance to win the group. Make it look easy. Seven to one. Well, everything was straight in. Sure. I mean, what well, anybody can run out from there.
Oh, it's only 12 o'clock. It's amazing how quick these two matches have gone. Yeah, I mean, in the next match is not till one. Yeah. Are we going to start it early? No, I can't. You got to wait till one? Yeah, I can't start them early, but we can start them perfectly on time well, that's since nice, we, we've though. got a little a little leeway. Uh, yeah. What I've actually started to do today is uh, I'm starting to try to get a little bit ahead of things and, and get out there and get ready for my intros and everything about three or four minutes before match time so we can lag right on time. Because last night was beautiful, Cotton. We, we, we were done at 8.58 p.m. last night. We were actually two minutes ahead of schedule. But you know, you don't expect nine to two and seven to one scores yeah. at this level, and that's the only reason that we're, we're as far ahead of the game as we are. What the heck happened to Torsten? Oh, it, it, he got a last rack, right? This, is, this oh, it just looked like the same layout here with, with the stripes up in yeah. that corner. Yeah. But uh, this should be pretty, pretty academic here. You want to get Corey to sign one of these balls? Uh, we've got, I've got Corey. On both balls? Yeah. Everybody with a check mark on this list has done. Oh, I see him. I didn't see those down there. All right, never. right. So I just need, uh, I only got, I got two, one or two balls left there. I need a couple of signatures. And then one of them is Shane, who's coming in for the next round. Dennis has already done it, and then I need uh, Ralph and, and Kevin. The games are clicking off pretty quickly here, and it does make it a little bit enjoyable. <coughs> you remember yesterday, the first match of the day was uh, Mike DeShane and Jason Shaw, and Mike jumped out 6-1 on him, and then Shaw started the soft break stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, the strategy worked for a little while. He actually closed the gap to 7-5, to five, but we had a couple of long and ugly games, and I think it's worth re-mentioning that you and I both made the points that Mike fell into the trap by trying to run out in one of those met racks that there was no way to run out and every ball he took off the table he got further and further into trouble. But we've seen none of that here between these two powerful players. Just had a new Kamui tip put on my shaft. Yeah, what? Mm -hmm. Black or brown? Or Black with the clear, clear backing. With the clear backing, yeah. What hardness? Medium. Yeah. I had one on last year. I liked it. Yeah, you know Shane plays with a a, a Kamui brown medium. Uh huh. You can actually tell the difference between the two. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm it sure. It seems like the the brown hits a little softer. I don't know. Yeah, I tried it when it first came out. I used it for a while. Again, uh, it just didn't work for me for straight pool. I think it's great for rotation games or one pocket where you're spinning the ball a lot. I mean, it felt good, but I had a little trouble controlling the spin just because I'm so much more of a center ball player. I like to spin my rock. Yeah, I know you do, yeah, I know you do. I've adjusted a little bit over the last eight or nine years of uh, putting more spin on the ball on my on my uh, break shots and straight pool. I picked a lot of that up from from John and from Thorsten. Mm -hmm. um, 
it uh, it really helps you in two two things. It, it really helps you to just pocket the ball, which obviously if you don't, it doesn't matter how you go into the stack. But uh, I think it helps the ball separate a little bit when you when you do go into the cluster. But it uh, you know it just took me a long time to force me force myself out of the the center ball habit on on my break shots. Straight pool's dying, isn't it? Well, it's been dying for it's been dying years. since uh, you know Moscone. since the since the late '60s, early '70s. Well, we still had the U.S. Opens, you know, and Miserac won the four U.S. Opens in a row in the early '70s, and then uh, towards the end of the '70s, uh, with the uh, strong TV presence of of nine ball, and uh, the fact that you know. Most of the younger generation just never played any straight pool. And also, Bobby, and I'll be the first to admit it, as much as I'm a straight pool lover, it's really not a good TV game to watch unless you're the, a purist because most of straight pool is not exciting. It's exciting to guys that know the game, that, that can appreciate how difficult it is to leave yourself a hanger or a straight-in two-inch shot every time. Mm -hmm. But I think to the American public that that just wants to watch some pool, um, it's it's it, it doesn't um, equate to a strong a strong audience. Once or twice a year, sure. Um, I grew up watching it on TV. I loved it. Oh yeah, teenager. I did too. I, Crane but of course, the back then, uh, that's about all we got to see on TV was straight pool. Yeah. And that was all around the time the Hustler came out. Right. And everybody, right. that got everybody all excited. And well, you know as well as I do that for, for years and years and years, decades, um, the world champion was the guy that was the straight pool champion. Mm -hmm. I laugh at these guys nowadays. They talk about Moscone on a four by eight, big pockets. And yeah, I'll I tell you what, I'll give you the same equipment and, and, yeah. and you go ahead and run 526. Exactly. And it could even be harder because the balls might even get jammed up more. Well, I'll tell you one thing that might have made that harder is the composition cloth. of the balls that, the that back then, right? Everything. Well, he they had the they had the wool nappy cloth, and uh, clay balls. Clay balls. Those weren't and plastic they don't open balls. Up. They didn't. No, you'd break two or three out of the cluster, and you'd have to yeah. do it three now three you hit times the balls a rack. And they explode like you know. Right. It's easier now. Oh, it's definitely easier now, even with a more difficult. Uh, pool table. Yep. Faster cloth, you don't have to, you know. So right. You got to get on this, a one ball down here. I'm just trying to get on, yeah, by the 13. Again. Yeah, I think he's got to just float down here off the off the 14, so I think he's going to play the 11 next. No, he's got the solids. Oh, I'm sorry. Duh. I've been he's writing in my he, notes he's in here. He's trouble here. I don't know how he's going to get there. He oh, that's a solid behind the 13. Yeah. Does it go in the lower it left? It goes in the left corner, but I don't know how he's going to get there from here unless he can. This, this he's got to play the 4 real soft and hold the angle for the 5 in the side yeah, where yeah. then he can draw over. Or maybe uh, he can't here. get he can't get there now off of either ball. No, this is touchy. Uh, yeah, he did he maybe he either waited too long or he just never had an opportunity to this, get there? I have no idea what he's doing here. Is he going to try to spin into it? I don't think he can. I, I think, think he's too in the way. right. And, and he can't go over and back. He's got to thread two needles. Yeah, I don't know how he wound up. The only thing I could think here how do you wind up is he's going to spin into the rail and into the inside the of the 12. 12. Catch the 12. Right, and spin into the inside of the 12, and, and Which that, that'll give him a little look. No. Well, maybe, he's, maybe it'll maybe. glance off. Maybe. You know what? We're both drunk. 
It's a stripe behind that it ball. Looks like, it looks like the one ball, doesn't it? You know. It you, looked like the one ball. You made, you made me we, look real bad there for five shots. Uh, we're, we're, you know. No, because you know what happened is the, <laughs> the part that was sticking out was the yellow part and the white part was hiding. I know, I know, I know. But, of course, I, I, can't, I can't get on you for that because I, I didn't even know which group he had when I looked yeah. up. Well, that's because I'm trying I'm to. I'm thinking, I'm how can he possibly leave that ball for a while? I'm trying to write notes and check standings and all that other stuff here. And I, I suppose the commentator yeah. should pay attention to the to the table every now and I then. I'm thinking, how can he leave that ball? I think he's really in trouble now. He's trying to make this a carom shot. I should have bet you on that. I, I should have bet he got out, and you said, nah, he can't get out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, he can't get to that solid. That's not a solid. I am think I'm going to go swimming for an hour. <laughs> I forgot my trunks. Maybe they'll wrench you a pair out there. Yeah. Like 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 bowling shoes. Look at this. Nothing goes, nothing goes. That's a stripe. stripe. Well, give me the stripies, depending on where the nine goes. He's got opening shot on either group, but if the nine goes, he might want the solids anyway, just because there's so many of them around the eight ball. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. this is a pretty good choice. Shoot the five Hold, hold to the five, yeah. I drag it here at the four ball for my next shot. I'd leave the one by the side for the last ball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I drag for the four here. He's going to go one four, but that's okay. As the two goes in the left pocket, I think the three does as well. Seven passes the nine. It shouldn't take long. I got Moscone's autograph right before he died. Did you really? Yep. Oh, how nice.
Let's see if Thorson breaks and runs out here for the match. Oh boy, look at these balls over here on the rail. Yeah, <clears throat> nothing goes. He's got the 15 or the 12 there by the side to get into him. If he wants to go stripes, if he wants to go solids, or you know how are you going to open those up? If he shoots this ball over here in the corner, he can go into those balls. Yeah. Go right into the five. Yeah, yeah, but if you go into the five, I don't think the stripe's going anywhere, and the five may still block the stripe. It's just hard. They're moving. Well, yeah. Right. And he can all, and he's got the twelve or the ten for insurance if he goes that way. Well, I see that. I think you just got to be out there and see how far the balls are apart, what direction yeah. they're headed in, and where they're going to go, depending on what side you hit them from. Because if you hit them from this side, you may be sending the two ball down there to make more congestion for your two stripes. If you hit them the other way, you know, you may not get the, the middle stripe to move very far. So there's going to be uh, I just a lot blast. of thought. I wouldn't worry about it. I just blast into them well. and go from there. <laughs> well, that's a good strategy, you know, Bobby. Uh, you want yeah. to see me play straight pool? Yeah, I was going to say, I like to like to play you some 14-1. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think you, uh -huh, I think uh -huh. he, well, he might go straight across. No, he's, he's going, going forward. No, he's he's through, he's taking your shot. But see, that's what I was afraid of is that because the power was going to be reduced by the th by the time it got there, he wasn't going to get all he three balls to separate. He hit it too easy. If he hits it any harder, he he risks maybe <laughs> missing them all together. <laughs> you know, it's different angles. I'm just happy I called the right first shot. Well, you did. Come on, give me a look. Give me a I'll give bit. you credit. No, he played your shot. I hit it good. Okay, now tell him how to figure I'll, out the rest of it. I would have shot harder. <laughs> it's see, all too see, funny. He'd like, to, he'd like to use the 12 to open the 14, but the problem is um, there's no insurance because he'd have to shoot the 10 off first. He's looking to see if the 12 will go by the one where he could possibly draw into the two and bump the 14 a little bit and then have the 10. Now he's looking at the 12 in the side and I think he's just gonna go down the table and he may get the 11 next. No? Yeah. How is he gonna, wh how is he gonna move this 14 you think? I think he's gonna do it off the 11 ball come straight up the table right at the deuce mm -hmm. but and just hope it doesn't yeah because i don't think unless you hit the two in a glancing blow you won't have a shot at the 10 but now he's got a nice big angle to come at it with a good amount of speed he's got to shoot the 10 now no yes 11. no he's shooting the 10. bobby you well, just you just threw away all on. you just threw away does, all your credits from from the calling the first on, shot. Does the ten ball go on the side? Okay, then he's shooting eleven. Yeah, you needed to figure that out I before you mouthed from, off, though. I you couldn't know. see from here. Well, if you can't see, you shouldn't be predicting. See how sweet that was. He had to make sure that he hit the two, beautiful not full in the face, yeah. or he doesn't see the ten or the fourteen. That was a beautiful now, shot. Now now he can make the ten. Okay, I'm going to do this next match like I'm commentating snooker. No oh, are you going to come with your southern British accent? Yeah, no more joking. Forget about it. I'm dead serious this next match. You know, you're going to last about five minutes with that. <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> no. ain't, yeah. Ain't happening. Boy, that was a nice shot. He hit that ball right on the outside like that, wasn't it? It was, it was beautiful. Beautifully Perfect. played. And that was really tough to do what he did. It was just a beautiful, beautiful shot. That's where I told you his his straight pool knowledge will help him. Not that not that his partner wouldn't have seen it. 
But okay, it's a nine to three victory here for the Hitman. And that uh, is uh, our second group B match. That brings Torsten's record to two and zero. And uh, Chong Young Lin is now one and one. So we have about 40 minutes to go till our next match.